Quality number seven, get others involved in your business. You can't do it all. There are only so many hours in the day, yet I see a lot of bands who want to book their own shows, handle distribution, do promotion, set up interviews, design flyers and album art, and take care of everything else needed to make a successful music business run. I think it is extremely important that you have a basic understanding of as many aspects of the music business as you can. You really need to know how to book some shows, set up interviews, design promotional materials, and deal with a printer to see how things work. However, if you want to eventually do music, which is why most musicians are in this business, you're going to have to hand off some of the non-music stuff to others. What part of your daily business must you be involved with? Here's some homework. For the next week, I want you to write down everything that you do, and I mean everything. If you make a trip to the post office, write it down. If you have to go to a bookstore, write it down. If you're booking your own gigs, write that down also. At the end of the week, I want you to go through your list and look for two things. One, things you can automate, and two, things you can outsource. For example, if you're making a trip to the bookstore, that involves getting in your car and spending time in traffic, finding a parking place, looking through the store to find exactly what you want, getting back in your car, and fighting traffic all the way home. Why not just hit an online retailer like Amazon and have the book shipped to you? If you're spending time writing checks, get an online account that will let you pay via the web or have the payment automatically debited from your account. There are hundreds of ways to save time and little things add up. Still, there are some tasks that have to be done the old-fashioned way. Things like getting on the phone and booking a gig or doing research on travel arrangements for your next tour are going to require some time. But does it really have to be your time? There are people dying to break into the music business, and if you're in a city with a college, you can probably find an intern to assist you in the little aspects of your business that don't require your involvement. Rather than getting online and trying to find the cheapest flight or most accessible hotel, get an intern to do it. And rather than going to the post office to pick up mail, get an intern to do it. And finally, rather than writing a cover letter and putting together a package to send to somebody, get an intern to do it. There are two ways that I go about getting interns. The first option is to contact the music or music business department at a local college. They'll probably have some paperwork for you to fill out, which explains exactly what you're looking for, details of the job, and other basic information. All schools differ, but I've worked with several and usually see three choices. One is a paid internship, where you pay the person working for you. This is uncommon, and in some states, it's illegal. So if you're on a budget, don't feel that you have to go for this one. Most people don't. The second choice you'll have is where you pay for a few hours of the intern's tuition. Having an internship goes toward college credit hours at most schools, and when this happens, your intern is actually paying to work with you. Personally, I think making them pay and then having them work for free is taking too much advantage of an already great situation. So this is the option that I recommend. I've found it will also get you a better worker because they'll appreciate the job more. Your total cost will rarely be more than $500 per semester. Your final option is not to pay the college or the intern at all. These folks are doing a job in trade for industry experience, so they're getting something a lot more valuable than money. Using this option, I've had plenty of people do work for me. At the height of my conference, 2NMC, we had dozens of people working for us this way. Some were beyond great, and some were totally worthless. And I don't know that it would have mattered if we had paid them money or taken care of their tuition. When you work with enough people, you'll eventually have some that aren't right for the job or otherwise flake out on you. More on that in a minute. Let's assume you don't have a school around or aren't interested in working through the school. A second option for getting interns is to go directly to them. The way I suggest doing this is to place an ad in the paper saying you're looking for people to intern for your company. Let's say, for example, it's a record label. Now, if you're just an artist, put down that you're a record label. People get in the music business because they think it's sexy, 
And a record label is a lot more sexy than working for a folk singer with two kids and a husband. You don't have to tell everything about the internship within the ad. The object of this ad is to get people to the next step in the process. And for this, I suggest that the next step is to have people call a 24-hour recorded message that gives more information. For example, you could place an ad that says this. Nashville-based folk record label seeks interns. For more information, call our 24-hour recorded message at 615-555-5555. That's it. Now, on that message, give the information about your company, what your main business is, and what you're expecting the intern to handle. I'm going to give you an example here. Feel free to edit it to meet your needs. Hi, thanks for calling our ad for music industry interns. This job is non-paid and not for everybody. If you're a curiosity seeker or are not dedicated to making a career in the music industry, please hang up now. You may find it helpful to have a pen and paper handy as I have important information about how to apply for the job that you may want to write down. We are a small label based in Nashville, Tennessee and specializing in the folk genre with a core artist touring the Southeast United States and are looking for somebody to help handle the day-to-day -day operation of the label, including booking, research, follow-up calls, shipping and receiving, and everything else that it takes for us to promote and sell records. This internship will be hands-on and give you experience much greater than simply being a gopher for coffee and donuts. You'll actually be part of our team. Previous music industry experience is helpful but not required. We are willing to train the right person. If you think that you'd be a good match for us and are willing to devote 10 to 15 hours a week for at least six months, please send the following three items to us at P.O. Box 121-135, Nashville, Tennessee, 37212. Number one, 500 to 1,000 words on why you want to work in the music industry and why you think you'd be our ideal candidate. Number two, a brief resume. Again, music industry experience is not required, but job experience that will be helpful to this position, such as telemarketing, customer service, or internet experience, is something you should let us know about. And number three, contact information including your full name, address, phone number, and email. Put those three things together and send them to P.O. Box 121135, Nashville, Tennessee, 37212. Thank you so much for your interest in this position. We hope to be working with you soon. Please note that it will take us at least two to three weeks to get back to you. And if you don't hear from us after that time, feel free to follow up. Yes, there are a lot of hoops you're making these folks jump through. But the intern game isn't based on numbers. You want the right person, not a lot of applicants. And the harder they're willing to work to get the job, the harder they'll be willing to work on the job. The more steps you make people go through to get to you, the better quality people you'll get. And I recommend using this same procedure when dealing with people from colleges. In fact, you can also use the same method when looking for new band members. So which of your two options, college or non-college interns, should you choose? With either option, you're going to run into both good people and those who are totally worthless. That's part of doing business. I've had interns flake out on me, leave in the middle of events, and otherwise not hold up their end of the bargain. And I've had non-interns, people on the payroll, run off with money, ruin valuable connections, and screw things up even worse. The one thing I've learned from these experiences is to be slow to hire and quick to fire. Don't just jump on the first person who comes through the door. Take your time and do things right. One more comment. Many colleges have a rule about students being at least juniors before they're able to do an internship. Personally, I think this rule is stupid. Hard workers aren't easy to find, and one of the best interns I ever had was a 17-year-old first semester freshman. Don't let bureaucratic rules keep you from running your business. Can't find an intern? Consider a virtual assistant. A virtual assistant, sometimes known as a VA, is an independent entrepreneur who provides administrative, creative, and technical services. It's a lot like having an employee, but you'll pay only for time worked. No coffee breaks, no personal calls, and no plain solitaire during downtime. And because they're contract workers, you don't have to worry about anything like benefits, office space, 
paid vacations, or insurance. You can get a virtual assistant for just a few hours per week or hire a dedicated one that will work for you full time. For more information, go to Google and search virtual assistant. And to get connected with several directly, I recommend Elance. Visit Indy411.com for more information on this and other recommended resources.